I've talked about using flash on the Pico as the non-volatile storage, holding data between resets. We could add external flash or e -square prom devices over I2C or SPI as an extension to that. You can even connect SD cards to an SPI interface. I am missing the obvious here though. The easiest non-volatile storage approach to use surely is USB memory drives. Let's explore that. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, IoT, robotics, and other fun tech. In this video, I want to take a look at the USB host support from the Pico and specifically working with USB mass storage devices. Please do like the video and subscribe. I do appreciate it. Let's step over to the concept table and just look through what are we really talking about? Let me just go through that introduction once again. So we've looked at using Flash in the past from a Pico to store non-volatile data that will survive against a restart of the device. Now the problem with that on a Pico is we've only got two gig of flash to start with. So if we want to store, you know, high quality images, which is unlikely, but you know, perhaps animations of images, we want to store a large amount of data. We just don't really have that much space. So what could we do? Well, we could, of course, add an additional EEPROM. That's fairly easy to do and fairly standard. And there are some good uh, tutorials and examples of doing that out there. EEPROMs come either talking I2C interface. So, you know, those two wires, nice, easy interface. One we use all the time for other devices. That's, that's one, one option. Um, EEPROMs also come with SPI interfaces, which is a bit faster for pushing data out and receiving data back, mainly receiving data back from them um, via an SPI interface. We could do that. In fact, the SPI interface actually is also what SD cards can talk. And you can just wire a standard SD card directly to an SPI interface and be able to read that. So that's also an option. But these are all complicated options requiring us to build additional circuitry and stuff. We've already got a USB port on the front of our Pico. Why not just plug a USB drive directly into it, a thumb drive? Well, that's absolutely possible. Obviously, we're going to need a little bit of an adapter to go from USB to micro USB but they're available on, on eBay and other providers. So that's nice and easy to just plug that in. Of course, if we plug our USB drive directly into the USB port on the Pico, then we can't be plugging a power cable in there. So we can't be getting power from USB. So how am I gonna handle that? Well, I'm gonna place a separate PSU onto my breadboard and I'm going to be driving five volts into the bus. Now you could also potentially do this via a powered USB hub by actually placing the USB and the power coming through that hub. When I tried that I didn't actually have a great deal of success with that hence why I ended up going with this route which mounts and works nicely um, but there certainly is reference to you being able to do it via USB hubs. It just may be particular USB hubs are liked by Picos and some aren't, and mine doesn't seem to be. I could not produce these videos without sponsors. Today's video is sponsored by Cancun, my favourite UK retailer for components. I love the ever-changing special offers of cool components. Cancun has kindly offered a discount of 20% on the first order for you, excluding tools and test equipment. Just quote Dr. John EA at checkout to get a 20% discount. So go check out Cancun today. Now there is a pre-built example project for the Pico that actually does tiny USB in host mode for a mass storage device. And it's this one here. What's more is it not only allows you to actually mount a USB device on the USB port on the Pico, but actually you can do it over some GPIO pins as well. B3 
because it uses PIO to simulate a JIT USB port, which is really quite cool. Though I must admit, I haven't actually tested that. The caveat about this particular example project is it talks about the tiny USB version and the version that you should be running. It wants you to upgrade to the latest version, not the one that came with your SDK. I wasn't too keen to do that because I didn't really want to muck up my SDK. But actually, this works on the SDK OK for 151. So if you're already in on the Pico SDK 151 and you're using this over a USB port, then this seems to work fine. So this example basically gives us a little command line utility that we're going to look at what is on a USB device. So here this runs up and the Pico almost immediately detects that I've got a USB device plugged into the USB. And I can now uh, list ls to list what's in the files and I can then read the readme.txt file. We can interrogate the USB drive. In actual fact, you've already got example code for doing this. It's part of the tiny USB library that was shipped with your Pico SDK. So you've got the code there. It's under the Pico SDK lib tiny USB examples host MSC file explorer. And this example is a little bit simpler. So I thought I would have a go at building it and just porting it over to the Pico so that I could actually build it and make sure that I know what's going on. So I've done this for you and it's on GitHub in this folder. So over in the repo, let's start by having a look at the source CMake list file. Because this is going to include three uh, source files for this example. Main, which is basically going to just run a uh, task loop, uh, splitting time between three tasks. MSC app, which is the mass storage app. So that's what's going to give us a command line interface to be able to list what's actually on that drive. And board, which is basically just going to flash an LED to tell us everything's OK. Now, in addition to linking in the tiny USB library for host, we're also going to need the FAT file system. And that's the file system that I've used on the drive. So um, that's actually included within the tiny USB library uh, as a sub library within it. So that's the one I picked up and I'm just picking it straight off of uh, what is in the Pico SDK. The other important thing in here is um, we've got a link with tiny USB in host mode. And actually, because we're in host mode, the one thing we must do is turn off standard I.O. over USB. Um, you can't do standard I over USB in host mode. You can only do it in client mode. Well, as far as I'm aware, um, and I've got um, my standard I.O. therefore is only going to go over UART and I've redirected it onto port 16 and 17 as I normally do. OK, let's have a look at main then. So main is going to initialize the uh, tiny USB host mode and it's going to initialize our mass storage app. And then it's basically just running a loop going between three tasks, all of which are meant to give up control pretty quickly after being called. So we have the uh, tiny USB host task, which is going to keep working on that USB and making sure everything's going OK. The mass storage one, which is going to be uh, looking and trying to uh, uh, get manage that command line interface and the LED which is just going to blink stuff. So let's have a look at the tiny at the MSC app which is really where all the work is and I in here I'm just going to look at one of the examples. So why don't we just look at how we actually list the files in a directory. This is where I wish I was in Eclipse because I could just go to a list on the side in Eclipse and it would all be wonderfully there. So here we are. Here's the list command. And really what list is doing is it is basically opening a directory using the FAT file systems uh, utilities or functions there to open that directory 
and then to basically just read the directory and read each item in that directory and print out some information there and then close it. Uh, it is really actually that easy to work with a file system mounted on that USB drive. Now there's a little bit of other code in here as well that's detecting that the USB has been did, um, mounted and actually mounting it and opening it. But actually that's the same code that you can copy from this example and it's the same code that you put in, in every example. So that stuff's pretty easy in boilerplate. Um, this doesn't look too difficult. And there's a nice example there and this is uh, just all the code from tiny USB. I've just ported it and got it running nicely on a Pico in, in a simple project here. So the demo looks very similar to what we've previously seen. Um, the Pico detects my device, I can actually then list it and then I can cat the um, text file on that device and see the same files. Nice. Working with the USB mass storage devices on the Pico is not that difficult. I got a little concerned with the need to update the libraries for the USB and use some additional custom libraries. But by stripping it back, you can build this directly with a library ship with the Pico SDK 151. That removes the risk of clashing library versions within the project. So now the amount of storage I can provide my Pico is not limited. I can do some more cool things. Do keep subscribed to find out what. Thank you very much for watching. Please like the video as it helps encourage me to make more videos. And please subscribe and hit that notification button to avoid missing the next video. Goodbye for now.